can take that out. All right, so number one, you should have gotten x squared plus 2x minus 15 plus 2 over x plus 2. Number two, you should have gotten x squared plus x minus 12. And since the remainder is zero, that's all you need to write. For number three, you should have gotten 2x to the fourth minus 19x to the third plus 13x squared plus 139x plus 105. And again, since it's remainder zero, that's all we need. And then for 4, you should have gotten just x minus 5. So on number 4, I just did three synthetic divisions. So I did the first synthetic division and then used my answer for that as the input for the next synthetic division and just proceeded on that way. So boom, 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 boom three synthetic divisions, and I'm done. Nick? Yep. X squared plus X minus 12. Uh, moving on to the factoring page. Make that a little bigger since those fit a little bit better. For number five, you should have gotten 2x minus 3 times 4x squared plus 6x plus 9. For number 6, you should have gotten x squared minus 5 times x squared plus 2. For number 7, you should have gotten x plus 2 times x squared minus 7. For number 8, you should have gotten x minus 2 times x plus 2, times x squared plus 4. For number 9, you should have gotten x cubed minus 7, times x cubed plus 5. And for number 10, you should have gotten 3x plus 4 times x minus 3 times x plus 3. Ooh. Going to number 11, you should have gotten 2x squared plus 5 times x minus 1, times x plus 1. For number 12, you should have gotten x minus 2, times x squared plus 2x plus 4, times x plus 2, times x squared minus 2x plus 4.
for 13, you should have gotten 2x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 2. For 14, you should have gotten 2x minus 1 times 4x squared plus 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. And lastly, for number 15, x to the fourth plus 16 times x squared plus 4 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Questions from this? No. Okay. No questions from the homework? Okay. Um, as a heads up, this key that we looked at right here, I posted to PowerSchool. Some of you may have found it already. If you go to the calendar, find the assignment. It's posted along with the clean sheet of the assignment. I do want to take a moment, though, and point out a shortcut that we can use for something like number three. So you notice on the key, when I wrote number three, I used the long division process, right? Everybody notice that when I ran through the key? You can, turns out that you can still do synthetic division on this. Just not quite the way it's written and not exactly the same way as we've done synthetic division before. But you looked at the key just a moment ago and saw and probably tried this one and saw this is kind of a doozy of a long division problem, right? There's a little bit of a pain. So you might be interested in how we can modify this problem so that we can use synthetic division on this, right? Because synthetic division, by and large, goes much nicer than the long division does. So here's the trick. For, to do synthetic division, we said that polynomial divisor has to be degree 1 and have a low, leading coefficient of 1. 3x plus 5 is degree 1, but its leading coefficient isn't 1. Let's make its leading coefficient 1. How can we do that? I'm just going to factor off a greatest common factor of 3. So I can rewrite that as x plus 5 thirds, or 3 times, excuse me, x plus 5 thirds. Everybody see that? So now I'm going to set up, I'm going to ignore that 3 out front for now. I am going to come back to it. But I'm going to set up my normal synthetic division problem now. I have this fraction, which is, you know, maybe not my favorite thing to have to work with, but it might be a decent trade-off for having to do the long division. So I'll start by bringing the 6 down. Negative 5 thirds times 6 is going to give me negative 30 thirds, which reduces down to negative 10. And when I add down, I get 57. Negative 5 thirds times positive, or sorry, times negative 57 gives me positive 95. 
When I add down, I get 39. Negative 5 thirds times positive 39 is negative 65. When I add down, I get 417. Negative 5 thirds times 417 is negative 695. When I add down, I get 315. And negative 5 thirds times 315 is negative 525. And when I add down, I get 0. Now, this is not exactly my final answer. Because if we look back at what did we actually do, we only divided by x plus 5 thirds, right? What do we still need to divide by? 3. Everybody okay with that? Well, fortunately for us, dividing by 3 is pretty easy. And obviously still zero. So, remainder, constant, x coefficient, x squared coefficient, x cubed, x to the fourth. So my final answer then is 2x to the fourth minus 19x cubed plus 37x squared plus 139x plus 105. which is the exact same thing that I got and I quoted to you using the long division. That's the reason I assign this particular problem is it gives me an opportunity to talk about this little trick, which is a nice trick, right? Synthetic division is pretty fast, especially when compared to the long division, right? So if I can take one of these long division problems and really turn it into a synthetic division problem, that's a real good dang deal, right? Now the catch is this trick only is going to work if it's a degree one polynomial. If it's degree two or whatever, like we saw in number two, there's no way around it. You're polynomial. You're dividing. You're doing the long division, right? Can't wiggle your way out of that one and do that as a synthetic division problem. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. Most of, I mean, almost all the time, you're not going to be able to cheat your way out of that. In a very special situation, you might be able to, but we're not going to worry about that. Okay? Everybody feel okay on that? That's a nice trick, right? Worth taking a moment and kind of showing you how to do that and wiggle around having to do synthetic, or I'm sorry, polynomial, or I'm sorry, long division for this problem. Does anybody find it odd that it's December 5th and we're like mowing the lawn and running weed whackers and stuff like that grass probably hasn't grown at all in the past month? Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so Today, what we're going to talk about new is solving polynomials. Now, we're only going to be solving, or the only solving technique that we have right now available to us is going to be factor. So this lesson today is going to dovetail very, very nicely with what you did last night. Okay? So let's do one of these problems, assuming it's a solving problem. Does anybody have a preference here? All right. Uh, let's just do, say, number seven for the sake of argument. So let's say that this said solve, and we have an equal zero at the end of it. 
I'm going to start this solving problem exactly the same way that we started the factoring problems. So the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I got to make sure it's equal to zero. In this case, that's already done for me. And now I'm going to count the number of terms. How many terms do I have here? Four. So if I have a four-term polynomial, what kind of factoring do I try to do on this? Grouping, right? When I make my two groups, though, what do I have to take special care to do? Got to make sure there's a plus sign in the middle of those two groups. Notice in the problem, it would be a subtraction symbol. How do I fix the subtraction? Plus a negative, right on. All right? From the first group, what's the greatest common factor we can take? X squared, right? From the second group, what's the greatest common factor? Negative 7. And then if I look at the thing in totality, my greatest common factor is x plus 2. And when I factor that off, I'm left with x squared minus 7. So up until here, it's been no different than what we did yesterday, right? That process we just did was identical to the things we were talking about yesterday. Here's where the solving kicks in. Once I have my polynomial factored completely, I can apply the zero product property, just like we did for quadratics. And I can set each of those factors equal to zero and solve them separately. So for x plus 2 equal to 0, I'll just subtract 2 from both sides, and I'm done. For x squared minus 7, what kind of a problem is x squared minus 7? What kind of an equation is that? We spent a whole chapter talking about it. Starts with a Q. Quadratic. You should have waited till I, you know, should have done it before you got the hints. You could have gotten some glory there, my man. How do we solve quadratic equations? There we talked about several different ways to do that during chapter three. What would be the best way in this case? Well, let's review the three major ways, right? So you could solve by factoring. Can I factor x squared minus seven? You could use the quadratic formula. When can I use the quadratic formula? Whenever I have something in standard form. In this case, I'll always be able to use it because in the process of factoring, my polynomial will end up in standard form. And what was the third way? I can kind of solve directly, right? What had to be, what had to, what did I have to have in order to solve directly? Not just equaling zero, I have to have just one kind of x, right? I can't have both x squareds and x's in my problem. What do I have here? One kind of x. So let's solve directly, because that's going to be the fastest method if we can do it. Here we can, because we have just one kind of x. So I'm just going to add 7 to both sides, and then square root both sides. When I square root both sides, what do I have to remember? Plus or minus. Somebody squeaked it out in the back. Should have said it loud and proud so I could have given you name credit on the videos. I couldn't tell who it was. Somebody was... Give Mosmo name credit. <laughs> there you go. It wasn't Mosmo. So those are our three solutions. Everybody okay there? Let's do another. Yes? Um, what was the trickiest one? Probably 14 was the most involved one from this factoring. Should we do 14? Yeah? Okay. So, again, we're going to pretend this is a solving problem. So it's got to equal something. Let's just set it equal to zero. 
in the solving problem homework, they'll be equal to something. First step is it's got to be equal to zero. We have that. Next step, we're going to start factoring. To tell what kind of factoring I want to do, what do I have to count? The number of terms. How many terms in this problem? Three. three. So if I have a three-term polynomial, first thing I need to do is check to see if it's in the quadratic form. So if I look at this polynomial, I have a degree six term, a degree three term, and then, an, uh, and then a degree zero term. Is that quadratic form? Yes. Because the leading term's degree is twice the middle term's degree, and the third term is degree zero. Everybody good? All right. So we'll make a substitution here and set y equal to x cubed. Why x cubed? It's always going to be the variable from the middle term. When I substitute the y's in, I then get something that is expressly quadratic. To determine how I have to factor this quadratic, I need to look at the leading term. In this case, what is the leading, I'm sorry, the leading coefficient, not the leading term. What's the leading coefficient? Eight. Does it matter that it's eight? Not that it's specifically eight. What do I really care about? That it's not one. If the leading coefficient isn't one, I have to do the long factoring process, right? Okay, so I'm going to need two numbers that multiply to give me the leading term times the, or leading coefficient times the constant term. So that's positive 64. And then add to give me the middle term coefficient. So what are the two numbers that multiply to give me a positive 64 and then add to give me a negative 65? How about negative 1 and negative 64? Everybody agree with that? Hopefully it's not too hard to see that. What we do with those two numbers then is we replace the middle term in our quadratic So I'm going to re rewrite my quadratic, but instead of writing negative 65y, I'm going to write negative 1y plus negative 64y. Now I'm going to start factoring by grouping. So I'll make two groups. Note the plus sign in the middle. What can I take from the first group? A y, very good. Leaving with 8y minus 1. And from the second group, what can I take out? Let's do negative 8. Usually we want that leading coefficient in the group to be positive. Tends to make life easier. Now if I look at this in totality, I see we have another greatest common factor, 8y minus 1. And when I factor that out, I'm left with y minus 8. But I didn't want to factor this over y. I wanted to factor over x. So let's go ahead and substitute back in. I know y is x cubed. So now I need to check to see if these factor anymore. I notice quickly that both of these are differences of two cubes. I can rewrite 8x cubed as 2x to the third, and I can write 1 as 1 to the third. And similarly, I can write x cubed as x to the third and 8 as 2 to the third. Everybody agree with that? Clearly, these are differences of two cubes. If I then apply the difference of two cubes factoring pattern, I get 2x minus 1 
times 2x squared, so 2x times 2x, that's 4x squared, plus 2x times 1, plus 1 squared. And then for my other difference of 2 cubes, I have x minus 2 times x squared plus 2 times x plus 2 squared. And now I should check to make sure that I'm done factoring. Am I done? I am. So the quadratic pieces we have there came from the sum or difference of two cubes factoring pattern. Remember yesterday when I mentioned offhand that those are never going to be factorable? So that I don't, I don't have to worry about checking those. If you tried, you would not be able to factor them. So even if you gave it a shot. Because, for example, there's not two things that multiply to give me four and add to give me two. Right? Easy to check that. There's not much to check. All right. It's factored completely. So I'm now going to take each of these four factors, set them equal to zero, and solve. Worth pointing out, this was exactly the same process we used when we solved the quadratics by factoring, right? Everybody remember that? Okay. Well, two of these equations are very easy to solve. 2x minus 1, I'm just going to add 1 to both sides and divide by 2. x minus 2, I'm just going to add 2 to both sides. Those are no-brainers, right? Not much to think about there. How do I solve something like 4x squared plus 2x plus 1? What kind of an equation is that? four x squared plus two x plus one equal to zero. What kind of an equation is that? I spent a whole chapter talking about them. Quadratic, very good. What are the three ways we talked about to solve a quadratic? Factoring, directly, and then the quadratic formula. Yes, those are the three. Can I factor this? No, we just got done saying that they couldn't factor them anymore. Okay. Can I solve this directly? No, because I have two different kinds of x's. I have x's and x squareds. So what am I left with only? Quadratic formula. Okay. As a helpful hint, the quadratic part that comes out of a sum or difference of two cubes, you're always going to have to solve using the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So let's simplify this now a little bit. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 times 1 is 16. 4 minus 16 is negative 12. And 2 times 4 is 8. How do I square root a negative number? Or what do I do when I'm square rooting a negative number? Does anybody remember that from chapter 3? Yeah, I got to use an i. So the square root of negative 12 becomes i square root 12. Now, if you left this as your final answer, that would be fine. But we can do a bit better than this. What we can do is we can simplify the square root of 12. Remember that 12 is 4 times 3, right? Everybody remember that? Just a basic times table fact. 
So the square root of 12 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 4 is just 2. So I can rewrite the numerator as 2i square root 3 all over 8. And then if I look at the numerator, each term of the numerator is divisible by 2. And the denominator is divisible by 2. So I can reduce this to be negative 1 plus or minus i square root 3 over 4. And that's my best answer. This one right here would have been okay too. I wouldn't have penalized you for not simplifying the radical. But you should be able to do that, especially for something small like, the, like a square root of 12. Everybody okay there? We have one more to solve. x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0. How should I solve that? And it's exactly right. We got to use the quadratic formula again. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Now notice the numerator in this is exactly the same as the numerator over here, right? Everybody see that? Okay, well, so I know then I can just write this as negative 2 plus or minus 2i square root 3, and then I'm over 2 this time. I just borrowed the simplifying from the other problem because it's the exact same thing. And I notice here again, each term in the numerator is divisible by 2 and the denominator is divisible by 2. So when I simplify, I get negative 1 plus or minus i root 3. And those are my six answers for this problem. Notice I have six answers, only four boxes. Why do I have six answers and only four boxes? Because of the plus and minuses would count as two answers, right? One where it's a plus and one where it's a minus. What do you guys think? Not much different than last time, right? Still, the factoring, I think, is the harder part. Occasionally, you have to run into using the quadratic formula, but eh, that's not so bad, right? We spent a whole chapter learning how to solve quadratics. Remember, if you did, didn't do great on that, you had the opportunity to redo the Chapter 3 test because that's a really important skill. We're going to have solving quadratics are going to come up again and again and again in all kinds of problems where you didn't exactly expect to have to solve a quadratic and like, oh my goodness, there's a quadratic I end up having to solve in this problem. It happens in this chapter, the next chapter, the chapter after that, the chapter after that. It happens all throughout the entire course. It's maybe the single most important skill of this first, of this Algebra 3-4 course is being able to solve a quadratic equation. Okay.